The LinkedIn Podcast Network is sponsored by TIAA. TIAA makes you a retirement promise, a promise of a guaranteed retirement paycheck for life. Learn more at TIAA.org backslash promises pay off. LinkedIn presents. By understanding the neuroscience of how your brain creates new pathways and the neurobiological prerequisites to make plastic change, you're better equipped to endeavor on a path for change. Fundamentally, your brain requires attention and repetition to make changes. Sometimes we think that if we can't commit to something for an hour a day, that it's not worth pursuing. But even five minutes of repetition can help maintain the thing you are trying to change in your conscious mind and lay down the foundations for a new path. Hey everyone, it's Tuesday. This is the Next Big Idea Daily. I'm your host, Michael Kovnett, and I think I might know what's holding you back from achieving your true potential. It could be your own brain, specifically your negative thoughts. You know the ones, those little inner voices that crop up throughout the day telling you you're a fraud, you're a failure, you're a fool. Okay, maybe I'm revealing a bit too much about myself here, but critical self-talk is one of the most common issues in psychology. It's debilitating for many people. It's an everyday obstacle for lots of us. If you can relate, you'll want to hear these big ideas from Rewire, Break the Cycle, Alter Your Thoughts, and Create Lasting Change, Your Neuro Toolkit for Everyday Life by Nicole Vignola. Nicole is a neuroscientist and organizational consultant, and she joins us now to share the key insights from her book. Your brain has a negativity bias. Neuroscience shows that negative emotions elicit a much larger response in the brain than positive ones, meaning that we tend to pay more attention to bad things and overlook the good ones, probably as a result of evolution. This means that sometimes we tend to dwell on the negative and fail to see our accomplishments. These negative biases can show up as stories that we tell ourselves. For example, it won't work out for me. I'm fat and ugly. I'm not unique. I'm not smart enough. I can't. Or they can also show up as a behavior. For example, You always come home to recount the malevolent and unfortunate events of the day in a melodramatic and embellishing tone, making it sound as if your day was worse than what it was. Neuroscience studies show that we tend to give more weight and attention to negative experiences and emotions. And not only this, but the brain registers negative stimuli more easily than positive events too. The good news is that we can change this. Neuroplasticity is the ability of our brain to reorganize itself and create new pathways. But more importantly, we can also undo certain ones, which means that we can dismantle habits and behaviors that are no longer serving us. How to rewire your subconscious. It is estimated that the majority of your brain, around 90 to 95%, is subconscious and it's driving your everyday actions and decisions. Have you ever said you were going to do something on a Monday, and then by Friday you have forgotten that you wanted to even try? It's not you, it's your brain. Your brain will revert to mental shortcuts called mental heuristics whenever possible. This is because your brain is trying to be efficient and save energy for more cognitively demanding tasks. You don't think about how you brush your teeth in the morning or make your coffee, you do it without thought. That's called automaticity. This is a positive thing, because if you had to pay attention to every single thing you did all the time, you would be exhausted by lunchtime. But this means that sometimes it can feel hard to adopt new habits, but by understanding the neuroscience of how your brain creates new pathways, and the neurobiological prerequisites to make plastic change, you're better equipped to endeavor on a path for change. Fundamentally, your brain requires attention and repetition to make changes. Sometimes we think that if we can't commit to something for an hour a day, that it's not worth pursuing. 
but even five minutes of repetition can help maintain the thing you are trying to change in your conscious mind and lay down the foundations for a new path. Neurons are responsible for communicating information in our brain. And the more we repeat something, the stronger the pathways of communication become, like a small footpath that turns into a dirt road that eventually becomes a tarmac highway. The power of your thoughts. Have you ever heard the saying, if you knew how powerful your thoughts were, you'd never think a negative thought again? I want you to imagine that it's a hot summer day and you're making lemonade. You grab a handful of shiny lemons from the fridge. They're cold, bright yellow, and waxy. You cut into one and the juice pours out of it. You begin to squeeze it, releasing a burst of zesty fragrance. Something compels you to take a big bite and your teeth wrap around the flesh, which is so juicy that it runs down your chin. Did you salivate? If you did, then you just evoked a physiological mouth-watering response as if the lemon was right in front of you. This shows us how important our thoughts are. We can change our physiological response according to what we're thinking. So if you're perpetuating a negative narrative about yourself, you're reinforcing these pathways in your brain and strengthening these beliefs about yourself. Neuroscience studies show that we can create neuroplasticity through thought alone. Our thoughts are extremely powerful and what we perpetuate in our heads becomes a reality. We can use this knowledge to our advantage. Research shows that mental imagery stimulates the same regions of the brain as when we physically perform the same movements and actions. Mentally rehearsing your performance and through repetition means that the actions become habituated in your mind. If you've already imagined executing something, then it will be easier to execute it later because you've created a blueprint for new pathways to form. Dopamine doesn't care about your happiness. Dopamine wants more. You know that feeling when you think, as soon as I get to place B, I will be happy. Can you relate to this feeling? Because when I asked my social media community about it, the most common themes that came up were weight loss, work, or academic accomplishments, and money. There were other examples too, like gaining Instagram followers, the number of likes on their social media posts, and buying their first house. Some were professional athletes who never felt satisfied with any of their wins. The underlying theme is that whenever they got what they thought they wanted, they were underwhelmed and dissatisfied. See, the thing is, that's dopamine. But dopamine doesn't want you to be happy. Dopamine wants you to have more. It's always on to the next thing. So if you're relying on being happy after you get what you want, after you achieve your goals, after you get the promotion, you will always be chasing happiness. Your happiness is now. Dopamine isn't the chemical of pleasure. It's the chemical that puts us in motivation drive in pursuit of pleasure. It helps to reinforce pleasurable experiences by linking them to the desire of wanting to do them again, knowing they'll make you feel good. Studies show that when we achieve a goal, dopamine levels actually drop. This is because dopamine is responsible for anticipating a reward and driving you towards it. To maintain dopamine balance and avoid overstimulation, dopamine drops quickly after reaching your goal. Therefore, if you are relying on reaching your goals to finally be happy, you will always be chasing that feeling. Your happiness is now. The real pleasure comes from the journey, not the destination. The only race is against yourself. Live easy in the moment, you won't get it again. The Neuroscience Growth Mindset and Mental Resilience The brain is a remarkable piece of machinery that uses information from previous experiences to be better equipped for future occurrences. Every failure and every downfall is just like updating our brain software with more data points to communicate what we should or shouldn't do in order to get a better outcome from the situation the next time. 
failure is information for the brain. When we have a fixed mindset, we attach our identity to the outcome. So if we fail at something, we begin to believe that it's a direct indicator of our self-worth. Individuals with a growth mindset, on the other hand, understand that fear and failure are part of the process. Neuroscience shows that we can increase the size of the area of the brain responsible for growth mindsets. Deep within the layers of the cerebral cortex, lodged between the two hemispheres right behind the frontal cortex, is a worm-shaped structure called the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. And scientists have shown that this area becomes more active when we adopt a growth mindset. In an experiment, teachers told their students they were very smart. Later, when the students were asked to select problems to solve, they favoured fewer challenging ones for fear that it would jeopardise their beliefs about being smart. They chose problems that would reinforce their beliefs and allow them to continue to demonstrate their good performance. On the other hand, students who were congratulated for their efforts demonstrated a greater ability to choose difficult problems because they didn't fear that they would fail. They knew that even if they failed, it was a learning opportunity for them to get better. See, the thing is, fear and failure never disappear, but we can learn to get better at dealing with them, and over time, we can increase our mental resilience to withstand more stress and more fear. Thank you, Nicole. All right, well, you can dig deeper into Nicole's ideas by picking up a copy of Rewire at your favorite bookstore. And for more help with getting your brain to be an ally rather than an enemy, download our Next Big Idea app, and you'll get smart advice from leading thinkers in lots of different disciplines. It's like having a TED conference right in your pocket. Just search for Next Big Idea in your app store. I'm Michael Kovnett. See you tomorrow. 